So this is Zeus, this is a client's dog. He's a Doberman, European Doberman. Nice looking dog. Is he everything we want in a protection dog? No, but he is a Doberman. It's hard to find really good working Dobermans. We're just working on him taking protection seriously. He already has a little bit of work done on him somewhere else, but you could see very much thought it was a game. And unfortunately the dog doesn't have a ton of prey drive that you can really bring him through that gaming mindset. There are some dogs you can actually teach really good protection to through a gaming mindset, but if the dog doesn't have a ton of drive, good luck to you. You're not gonna have enough there. So what we're doing here is we're building some real perception of, of threat, okay? Like you're actually in a scenario where you do have to protect yourself. If you don't protect yourself, there are consequences. That creates a bit of a more intense mindset in the dog. There are pluses and minuses to doing it, but when you don't have a ton of prey drive, this is what you need to do if you want to bring out the most in the dog. Let him go. Ah, yeah, 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 man, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Pull back. Don't move your feet. Oh, I... ah! Good. He's already in that place where he's like, okay, this is a little bit serious, but I want him to commit to that grip. So in order for him to commit to the grip, I need to make him believe he's hurting me. If he doesn't believe he's hurting me, then I'm not going to really get anywhere with him. Ah. Yeah. 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 Just leave, hey, motherfucker! It's me and you. Ah, ah, back to the corner. Back to the corner, hey! Yeah! yeah. Oh! Oh! Ah! Yeah! Come, 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 come! I said, yeah. Ah! 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 Good! Ah! Ah! Oof! That hurts. He started saying, ah, let's play again. Let me look at the sleeve. And I said, not today, motherfucker. We're not playing. This is real. The second I let him go back to play, it's like all this work that we did to try and get him out of play mode goes away. You could see it in the barking. It changed. The tempo went from, hi, 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 hoo, hoo, hoo. You heard it, that dopey bullshit barking. Right away, I got in on him. Forget the sleeve, it's just me and you. And he backed up for a second there, and then he came forward. This is really starting to show the dog, hey man, I don't care if there's equipment involved, it's still me and you, it's still for real. Well, bad news, he happened to put this down in a pile of shit. So, the shit is over here. I think it's safe to wear, but that's gotta be picked up. Yeah! yeah. Good, back to the corner. Yeah! Uh, I... Mother of Christ. Don't do this while you're injured. Don't let him put that in the pile of shit again. Okay guys, so we saw a little bit of defense work here, okay? You saw me using defense to bring out more in the dog. But let's talk a little bit about defense because I think it's a thrive state that is either unfairly vilified or glorified depending on who you're talking to online, right? There's a lot of people that go, oh, I only want my dog trained in defense because prey is play and sport and I want a real dog and blah, blah, blah. Here's what you have to understand. If you're serious about training a dog to do protection work, police work, bite work of any kind, defense originates from the perception that serious bodily harm or injury is possible, all right? The dog actually has a perceived insecurity about the decoy, which is why he's reacting in a defensive manner. What is the purpose of defense? The purpose of defense is to drive the threat away. You're making a big enough show to drive the threat away. Now, are there dogs that in a defensive mindset will actually bite if you get close enough? Of course, but what is the goal of the bite? Is the goal of the bite to close with, dominate, possess, control, ultimately consume if we're talking about prey drive, or is the purpose of the bite to drive you away? And that's why you see a dog that bites exclusively in defense will not bite full, firm, and hard. He'll bite with the frontal canines, and usually he'll come right off because he wants you to get away, get away. He's trying to drive you away, but it's a fear and insecurity mindset. So there's nothing wrong with that perception. There's a lot of guardian breeds, especially Dobermans, Mastiffs, so on and so forth, that have this perception inside of them, all right? And it can be stronger, and it takes very little to trigger it, right? 
right? For some of those dogs, even waving a sleeve at them triggers that defensive mindset. And for some of those dogs, something as simple as just looking at them too long or being a little bit too square with them triggers that defensive mindset. And then for dogs that are high prey, more social, thicker nerves, you can, you know, even yell at them and scream at them and, you know, show them the whip or even whack them with it. And the dog will stay and pray. It'll be quiet, it'll be pulling. Right? You can be like, yeah! And that dog will stay in that prey forward mindset. So neither drive is inherently good or bad. You just have to understand what each drive does. And you have to understand how each drive can impact the individual dog you're dealing with. This Doberman here, okay? He doesn't have a lot of prey. He doesn't have a lot of play. He is relatively social, pretty stable in terms of his nerves, but he doesn't have a lot of prey, doesn't have a lot of play. So if my goal is to bring this dog out and push him into active aggression and get a dog that's forward and confident and meaningful in the bite work, a dog that doesn't require a lot of signals to engage in the bite work, doesn't need special equipment, doesn't need a special decoy. I need a dog with intensity. He doesn't have prey and play intensity. Some dogs have tons of it. And you can use the competition via the game. You can use the acquisition of prey to just motivate the dog to achieve very high level of proficiency in bite work. But he doesn't, and a lot of dogs don't. So this is where defense comes in. Every dog has defense to some degree. You just have to teach him what to do with it. Now, some dogs naturally come forward. Again, those guardian breeds come to mind. They'll come forward, blah, 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 blah. And they might be in a defensive mindset, but their automatic reaction to that feeling of, hey, I think that guy's gonna do something to me. It's, come forward and be aggressive. And some dogs go, ooh, I don't want any of that, I'm gonna hide. Now, that Doberman, unfortunately, and, and many Dobermans, his default reaction was to go, I don't want any of that, I'm gonna hide. And I said, well, that doesn't make me go away. And when he realized that didn't make me go away, then he experimented with a little, whoa, whoa, and boom, I took off. And then we built from there, right? So that's the foundation, because here's the thing. I'm gonna create a lot more arousal with that type of dog with the defense than I'll ever get playing prey and play game. I keep the dog here in a tight space. I make the defense, okay, until the dog is forward in the defense. He's forward, he's active, he's powerful. And when he's full power forward here and he learns that this is the only thing that makes me go away, because again, remember, the defensive dog wants me, the decoy, to leave him alone. That's fundamentally what it is. When I reward this a bunch of times, then guess what I start to do? I am not gonna make half decent bite work with defense right? Defense can be the underlying motivator, but fundamentally, I do need the dog to make a prey transition in order for me to actually have decent gripping behavior, committed gripping behavior. Now here I know, oh, has, oh, I, I've got this defensive dog and he bites great and then he's moving into prey. You might not understand or realize that the dog's moving into prey. And believe me, I see a lot of people claim, oh, my dog's all defense. And then they show a dog that's in prey frustration and then actually engaging in prey gripping, biting and possessing behaviors. But they think because the decoy's not wearing a sleeve and he's going, yeah, yeah, that this is a dog in defense. I don't care what you're doing to the dog. The dog will tell you whether he's in defense or whether he's in prey, right? And if you know how to recognize those signals, you know what the dog is. So what we're doing here is we're pairing, leaving him alone, right? Running away basically with the prey. And that teaches him that when something triggers the defense, he needs to come through that insecurity and move into an offensive prey mindset. And ultimately, it goes from getting me to go away just by showing me a big display and coming forward into the leash to ultimately coming forward and biting me to make me go away. And then we just build on that. And a lot of the times when you're doing this process with the dogs, they will actually begin to enjoy it. And then you'll find that the dogs don't go to defense as much. They actually go very quickly through the defensive arousal and into active aggression. Yes, there's an element of nerve, there's an element of defense in there. You're not exclusively prey or defense with many dogs. Many dogs kind of like have a little bit of both going on at the same time. With the defensive dogs, it's possible with some dogs, not with all, to have them make that transition into a forward active aggression, a prey behavior, maybe some social dominance, and then they actually begin to enjoy it because who doesn't like winning? And when you teach a dog how to win at something, just like with human beings, they love being winners, right? You can do this over and over again. And if you know what you do, it, you can actually take a dog who went from full on avoidance to full forward active aggression. And I've done it many, many times. Now, again, I'm gonna say this. You cannot do this with all dogs. And some dogs will never leave the corner proverbially. All right? But you just have to understand it. It's neither inherently good nor inherently bad. You can make a dog who will bite anyone, anytime, anyplace with literally prey and play. And you can make a dog who will bite anyone, anytime, anyplace with defense. Um, I will say this. Typically, dogs that you need to bring out through defense don't make the best sport dogs. They don't make very good recreational bite work dogs or police dogs. 
They lack the security and the longevity to get through you know, long periods of bite work. Like a sport dog or a police dog, he might need to be on a grip. He might need to be in a fight for a long period of time. The defensive dog is kind of hit it and quit it. Fundamentally, even if he really enjoys the work, it's really easy to kind of push him back into that place mentally. So while you can make that dog a lot more than what he was, there's still that fundamental defensive core there. So guys, this not so short description on defense uh, brought to you by Shield K9. Check out our protection foundations course. I go through all this stuff in detail, whether you're building a dog in prey play, whether you're building a dog through social aggression, through defense, so on and so forth. Protection foundations, shieldk9online.com. Check it out. Thank you for watching.